Hi, see we got some people here. Uh, I'll be right back. Can you guys hear me? I think, uh, I think I've got it set up to mute everybody when you first join. Okay, good. I'll be right back. <clears throat> only three um yeah so you know like i was saying in my emails um these are mostly going to be for questions and answers kinds of things so um feel free to start asking questions if you have any uh about stuff so if we get more people i might start introducing some topics and things but i'm going to wait for a few more people but uh, you guys that are here can certainly ask some questions if you have them to get started share my screen. Can you all see my uh, my dev box here? Oops. So you, you guys that are here, can you uh, hear me still and uh, see the uh, screen that I'm sharing? All right, <laughs> I'll take that as a yes from everybody, hopefully. So feel free to unmute your mic too if anybody wants to ask a question or anything or type it into our chat. I got my, I got the chat box up. So. One thing I forgot to mention, um, the, all the examples for the lecture videos are in this examples subdirectory. Um, how many of you guys that are here early, well, it's on time now, uh, have, have got your dev box up? Is, is anybody still working on that? Or, or do you three have it running right now? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, definitely, if, if you have some uh, questions on getting it set up, uh, let me know. I mean, if you, if you run, I think I'm getting about, seems like at least uh, two thirds of the people seem to get it up fine. Um, and then, uh, but, but certainly other people have been having some issues getting up and are still working on it. So.
So Sonia, do you, what do you mean by you're stuck in between? Hi, <clears throat> hi. Like uh, I'm stuck in the boot part where you need to boot the whole computer and then. Right. Do you see? Yeah. So. Do you see anything when you do the vagrant up? You talk about uh, the. Vagrant. Yeah, I downloaded the two. Uh -huh. The what was that? The vagrant and another Xbox. But yeah, for the booting part, I'm stuck in that. But yeah, I'll figure it out. Okay, well, yeah, to, to me, emails or, or whatever, or yeah, keep working on it right yeah, now. Yeah, sure, I'll do if that. Have, if you have questions, doing sure. stuff. So, so yeah, if you've got, uh, for mm -hmm. those that are here, if you guys have the tools, those three tools installed correctly, um, then yeah, you have to do the, the clone of the repository first, and then you have to change into that repository and, and then do the vagrant up. So. So, uh, getting a few people here. So, um, so if, if you just joined, you know, uh, if you have questions, go ahead and start asking them. I might start talking about a few things um, that I can think of, but. Um, um, but these are mostly meant to be kind of help sessions or question and answer sessions. Uh, so I know uh, people probably mostly have on their mind right now getting the environment set up. Um, and um, um, getting started on the assignments. Let's see here. Uh, but yeah, we can cover some things about the syllabus, kind of what the structure of the course is, those kinds of things as well, if people have some questions about those. So yeah, for the uh, for, for what I was talking about there, if you do have the three tools set up, you know your next steps are you have to do the git clone. Um, I usually don't type this out by hand, but uh, it's what bitbucket org slash dharder slash Although I probably made some mistakes on that typing there, but um, oh yeah, it should be that. So, but yeah, so when you do that, that should basically download the files that you need. Basically, all the files, all the assignment files, um, and all these files associated with um, this virtual uh, dev box here in order to get it set up and installed and stuff or in the repository. And then I was talking to somebody else, so they had gotten the clone, but um, but you do have to change into the directory. So you do have to change directory into, uh, after you get it cloned, change in that, make certain that's your current directory. And then from here, you can do the vagrant up uh, and vagrant uh, halt command. So. <clears throat> so yeah, and the first time you do the vagrant up, uh, it will download a bunch of stuff and it might take a while so it actually has to download the uh, what's known as the base image which is kind of like a, a like a CD you know an, an, an ISO ISO file uh, which has the the base image and then once it gets that it'll actually boot up the machine but then it'll start installing things so uh, we install uh, a bunch of tools um, editors and things which I might show a little bit of here so Okay, um, so any, any questions here or uh, anybody wants to ask? Okay. 
I've got quite a few people on here, so I, um, I might start talking a little bit about the, the syllabi, the syllabus and class structure and stuff, uh, unless people start asking some questions. So, but yeah, feel free to, to type in in the chat or go ahead and unmute and, uh, and ask away if you have some questions. Let me see, I'm gonna bring up the syllabus here. Maybe just talk a little bit about a few things about the class while I'm seeing if anybody will work up the courage to ask some questions here. Let's see, where's the syllabus? Uh, so yeah, or actually, um, I think I have the syllabus. Let me, let me Share, share my desktop again, so. Um, so let me know if you can't see my uh, virtual box desktop here or if my sound goes out when I'm talking here, which happens occasionally. Uh, I think I did have the syllabus. Didn't I have the syllabus? Um, I guess I didn't. <laughs> Should put it in the repository. So yeah, maybe I'll copy the syllabus. So um, all right, yeah, I know, Mr. Cole. I, I, I emailed you, so I'll take a look at that here uh, in a bit. Um, so yeah, one thing I mentioned in the video, if you watched my getting started video, this, this directory here, if, if everybody can see my desktop, is a shared uh, folder. So it's shared between your, what's known as the host uh, and your guest. Um, so yeah, if I want to, I, I should be able to, to put the syllabus uh, in there um, so I can have it on my virtual machine. Um, Copy it over there. There we go. Reload that. So yeah, and, and you know we've got uh, an Office suite, LibreOffice installed, so you should be able to open up docx files and other kinds of things. And there should be a PDF viewer installed on here. And other things. Um, all right, yeah, so I'll just maybe start giving a little bit of information here. I'm not hearing too many questions um, yet. Um, so yeah, I, I do have two, um, uh, two sections of this course, uh, in case you didn't know. So one is supposed to be a, what's known as a blended course, uh, which kind of, it, it, I mean, it has a scheduled meeting time, which is what we're using right now um, from like two to three or two to three fifteen, I think officially. Um, but a blended course means basically though that um, we have more flexibility in terms of the face-to-face -face schedule. So, you know, I, I can make things um, be required or not required. I, I usually even, even in normal circumstances, I usually don't have any um, requirements for attendance or anything like that. But for a blended course, I might, I sometimes in the past might have like a face-to-face -face test or two. So you would be required to come for those days, but then other days are, are just optional help sessions or, or lecture sections, uh, sections. So, so the, the kind of the mode that we're in right now, I'm not gonna, I, I don't have any plans to have any uh, required face-to-face -face, um, sessions, even for the blended course. So, um, um, so we will do all the tests and stuff online uh, through the MyLeo online um, class management system, uh, and the assignments and things like that will be submitted um, and and so on for both of the sections. So. Uh, you probably do need to get this textbook. So, um, although you know. It's probably not too important that that you get a most recent edition. So I think there's like an eighth or ninth edition, maybe even a tenth. Um, I'm not certain, right? So seventh or even sixth is 
probably fine. So, but you should be you should be reading the assigned readings from there, and also the assigned readings once we get to the data structures and, and algorithms um, uh, stuff from this free textbook, this online textbook. So. Uh, let me see here. I've got an electronic copy of that textbook. Let's see if I can get it. So yeah, this is actually a sixth edition copy of the textbook, but uh, but yeah, you should be fine, uh, just as long as you um, get a copy of it and uh, um, you know are able to read the the, the chapters. It, these I, I I don't know I, the the textbook, in my opinion, isn't the the very best. It, it's a bit of an info dump sort of a textbook. So, um, but uh, you know, it is good to at least uh, read these these. Um, um, chapters that I give you to read uh, or review them. So for this first week, um, I'm expecting, of course, that you took programming two. So you really should have done like the first uh, seven or eight chapters at least, user-defined functions. Uh, and, and you really should have also been doing some things like some records and structs um, and classes maybe, at least got started with them in programming two, right? But that's kind of about where we start in this class. So I assume that you can do things like maybe write loops and uh, if statements, um, and, and you should have written some functions and stuff in C++ or, or another language, Python maybe, um, depending on which version of the program two you took. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and in here we will kind of, kind of this week we'll start with a review, but we'll start with uh, user-defined functions, uh, basically. Um, so so I, I mostly start by, uh, talking about functions. So the, the first three videos that I have this week, video lectures are about functions and then about um, uh, user defined types like enumerated types and, and things like that. So. All right, so yeah, and then hope, hopefully as everybody's aware, you do need to get your dev box up. So I, I want everybody to try and get that done before tomorrow and then to, there's a, a, a small assignment, um, um, a really more like a, a, a check to see. So you should, uh, so by the way, to, to show that, um, so from the command line, If you do a directory listing, uh, all of our assignments are under the um, um, the assignment directory. So if you go into the assignment directory, and again, kind of like I showed in my video, you know, you you can browse these files from a command line, or you can use your file browser. So you know, the same thing. If if you go to the, the repository directory and look under assignments, you should see all these same. Um, folders. Uh, of course, you won't have solutions for you, but uh, but uh, you should see all the assignments. Uh, but yeah, what I was starting to talk about was this example one. So by tomorrow, you should get try and get your dev box set up, and then you need to go into the example one and do a make submit, okay? Uh, and that should create uh, a, a file named um, uh, example one.tar.gz. So for all these uh, um, assignments for the class, in order to, to submit the file, you need to go do a make submit for the assignment. That, that will result in a tar.gzip file, which should have all the code, source code that you worked on, basically. And then you, bas then you have to take that file and upload it to MyLeo online, okay? So, so you do have to do that part by hand. So you can either use Firefox inside of your dev box, you know, or, or again, since this folder should be shared with your host, you can just use your Firefox on your host machine, um, uh, find that file and upload it, okay? Um, um, uh, 
so, but yeah, that was kind of like your first task um, that, that I want everybody, I want everybody to either get, you know, your dev box up and, and submit that. Or if you don't have your dev box up, uh, you definitely need to send me an email and, um, by tomorrow, uh, end of the day, and kind of tell me where you're at and what issue you're having. Um, and if we need to, you know, I might send the GA your way or somebody to, to kind of help you more in person. Um, so. Um, so yeah, I mean, this course, uh, I mean, it's not really a, 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 you know, learning to program course, okay? So, but, but we are using C++ um, and, uh, and we will talk a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, so, so we'll go back and forth between learning some more of the advanced kinds of things you can do with C++, you know, like doing object-oriented programming and, and uh, uh, you know, defining classes and uh, doing some other things. Um, operator overloading stuff like that but mostly we 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 do those things in this class because they're useful to know how to do those so that you can understand better how data structures um, are implemented basically from sort of a low level okay so so this class is all about learning how to implement data structures and then also learning a little bit about the topic of of analysis of algorithms um, so that you can compare the performance uh, of data structures. So if we imp implement, um, let's say, uh, a, a queue as a list versus implementing a queue as a stack, or sorry, a, a queue as, a, as a, a, a linked list versus implementing it as an array or implementing it as a tree, you know, what are the trade-offs and, and uh, uh, which things are, um, uh, you know, which things are faster and which things are slower uh, when you implement the data structures in different ways. Okay, that, so that, that's kind of really the, the, the big um, topic, you know, the, the, the main kind of goal of this course, you know, is, is learning the basics of data structures like stacks and queues, linked lists, trees and things, and kind of get a flavor for how they're, they're implemented um, and, and learn how you can kind of compare them basically. Um, um, so compare them algorithmically, so their performance. So. Um, okay, uh, everybody can, can see my desktop, right? I'm not, I'm not talking and people can't see my, the, the desktop or the syllabus. Yeah, we could see it. Okay, good. Yeah, Thanks. Good. Um, okay, so, and then, you know, in general, um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of details in the syllabus, but um, basically every week there's a quiz um, followed by a programming assignment, okay? So the quizzes are gonna be due on Wednesday. Um, so what, the, what I imagine you should be doing is watching the videos and reading the textbook on Monday and Tuesday um, and uh, in pre preparation for the quiz. The quizzes aren't meant to be, um, you know, so they're only worth 10%. Uh, each one is worth less than 1%. So they're, they're meant to be kind of low pressure, uh, but, but they're meant to try and give you sort of immediate feedback on whether you're actually doing enough with the class videos and the class textbook that you're not lost uh, so, so that you're self learning um, the material sufficiently okay so usually there'll be five or ten questions some true false um, um, multiple choice maybe a, a, a quick answer kind of questions on those quizzes all right so yeah you should start by doing the materials and watching the lecture videos and then do the, the quiz uh, and then kind of use the quiz as feedback, you know, so if, 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 if stuff, if you weren't expecting some things or didn't un understand some stuff, you might want to take that and go back on Wednesday or Thursday uh, after you take the quiz um, um, and um, if you need to look back at the materials um, or, or work with the materials some more. So. Um, 
Uh, and then there is a programming assignment, basically one each week. So we end up with 13 actually, 13 quizzes and 13 programming assignments. Um, so you should probably sometime Monday, Tuesday, at least start looking at that um, um, uh, and, and begin working on the program assignment so that you have a handle on what you're gonna need to do. Um, and then kind of once you've done the, the materials for the week, uh, get started on that in earnest sometime by midweek at the latest. So, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm expecting you to work on that and submit it on um, Friday, basically. So the program assignments are a significant portion of the, the grade for the class. So you, 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 you can't skip those. Uh, I mean, again, there's more than 10 of those. So each one individually, if you completely mess it up or something, isn't, um, you know, um, uh, isn't going to uh, automatically cause you to have a bad grade in, in the class, but you can't skip more than two or so of these or do really poorly on two or three of these and still get like an A or B grade. So, so you do have to work on those program assignments and get them in. Um, um, so it's, it's almost every week that we do have an assignment. There are two weeks set aside for a midterm exam and a final exam. Um, so during those weeks, we won't have a normal quiz and assignment. You'll just have some review materials and then the, the test will be due, um, will be open and then due on Friday at the end of the week. All right. So anyway, that, that's the general uh, structure of the class. I, I see I've got, um, I've got some information incorrect. I need to, to correct on the syllabus here. I can't believe I missed that. So, so, so the, the, the general structure I have right now, and we'll see, but, but yeah, it's quizzes on Wednesday, and programs on Friday. So, so I'm trying to move stuff to, so that we're doing more stuff during the week instead of on the weekends. Um, I mean, if, if you do work on the weekends, you really should try to start the weekend before, right? So, so I'm probably gonna keep the things due on Wednesday and Friday, but, but if most of your time available for work on this class is weekend time, uh, like starting with this next weekend, uh, you, you should you know do your stuff for Unit two, week two on, on Saturday and Sunday, basically, this, this weekend here. So. All right, good enough. I mean, um, nobody's asking questions about the structure of the class or the, um, um, or, or getting the dev box set up or the assignments. So, so let me know if you have any questions at this point about things. And yeah, most of the rest of it is boilerplate, so. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'll I'm, I'm probably maybe talk a little bit about the assignments right now. Um, uh, although I'd also be happy to talk about getting your development environment set up if anybody has any general questions. Um, uh, now that I'm thinking about that, I did. There is one general thing that I think uh, two people ran into, um, and I'm not certain um, if both of them. I, I think one of them has resolved it. I'm not certain about the other. But if you're a Windows 10 person, uh, but if you don't, if, if you go and you don't have that Hyper V uh, option to turn off or, or installed, you have some other kind of virtualization. Um, I'm not certain uh, why some versions of Windows, uh, I need to dig into this a little bit. So um, um, so it, it was um, a little bit unknown to me. I thought all of them had this Hyper-V for the virtualization. But if you don't have that, um, the, there's, you can't, the, I don't know of the correct way to kind of turn off the things you need to turn off for virtualization. So you, sh you should go ahead and try and install anyway. Uh, but but yeah, one or two people seem to have had problems. But I think I have a workaround, right? So so if you're in that situation, you're a Windows user, but something looks a little bit different. You don't have the um, uh, that Hyper V feature. Uh, you have something else. I should have brought up the. Uh, um, 
I should have brought up the README here now that I'm talking about things. So, uh, but, but yeah, if you run into that situation, let me know. I might have a workaround. Like I said, I think one person successfully used, figured that out using this workaround. So, so our class repository is uh, on Bitbucket. So I usually keep most of my class repository. So if you're, if you're familiar with Git, um, Bitbucket is kind of like GitHub, it's same, same thing. It's just a, a free repository or you can make free publicly available repositories on here like Git repositories or other type of uh, revision control system repositories. So, um, so for this class, it's the uh, 2336 one. Um, and basically, yeah, the, you, you need to be trying to follow these uh, read me instructions here that you'll get kind of on the front page of this repository uh, project here. So, well, my internet's kind of slow. I, I don't know if anybody, I'm, I'm kind of on a rural, band, rural Texas um, internet connection, and at the moment I've got actually two other people in the house trying to do uh, video conferencing, so so things are probably real slow. Um, so, so yeah, you do need to just install these tools, um, and then when you get to that point, um, need to clone the repository if you've got Git successfully installed, and then change into that repository. So these vagrant commands only work if you're in the, 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 if your working directory is the repository directory. So change into there first uh, and then try this vagrant up, right? Um, kind of as a hint, if you are having issues, um, it helps me instead of a screenshot, um, if you can learn to copy and paste so, you know, if, if you have a, a, a MS-DOS terminal, you should be able to, to copy text just like I do here, um, or however you normally select text. So for, for an MS-DOS, if you're a Windows user, I think the, the copy command is enter instead of control C. So, um, or you can, you know, find your, your menu item and, and, and find out how to do a copy and then just paste that into an email message. So that's the most useful information if you actually copy the, uh, the actual error output messages you got from Vagrant Up or, or whatever issue you're seeing. So again, also like for your assignments, if you're, once you get your dev box up, if you're in your assignment and you do like a, a command, like from the command line, um, and let's say instead of this cleanly building, uh, you have an error, you know, just, uh, just go ahead and copy that text. So in, inside of um, um, Ubuntu uh, from a command line terminal, it's shift control C to copy. So you should be able to find that from, um, I think if you look at the terminal here, uh, no. Um, where does it have, where does it tell you about, uh, oops. Uh, I thought somewhere it would tell you the copy and paste command. So, so it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's shift control C because control C from a terminal uh, is, is a way to kill a process. It sends an interrupt to a process. So, so control C will act, it actually interrupt stuff. Uh, so it's not bound to copy. So you have to do shift control C to do a copy um, and then, and then paste it in, you know, to an email message or something. So. I'm going to go ahead and start up Visual Studio Code here. So. Um, so, 
I mean, I, I am, uh, I've got stuff set up to use Visual Studio Code, although like, like I showed in the video, I installed some other stuff. That's more just for you to maybe try out things if you want to, right? Um, so uh, I've been playing around with Atom and Sublime um, and Visual Studio Code. All three of these uh, editors and development environments are kind of targeted for a similar sort of um, um, a similar sort of target audience, right? So they're all meant to be um, highly extensible editors for programmers or so code editors. Uh, they, they've all got um, uh, some sort of uh, extension system. So Visual Studio Code calls these extensions. So you can install packages to do things, um, um, you know, so, so to set up your environment. So it could be a C++ build environment or a Java build environment or uh, a, a node, a JavaScript node build or whatever, right? So, so they've got lots of things so you can customize it exactly the way. So I've, I should have, if, if your um, dev box is working, uh, if, if it got installed correctly, I should have everything set up so you can do the C++ development um, and uh, work with the, um, um, the assignments, basically, right? So I show that in one of the videos, one of the getting started videos. So after you have DevBox up, you can watch that getting started video on some more hints about um, uh, doing your project. So the, the video I gave is, is, I have an example project which is pretty similar to the first project you need to do during week one here, the assignment one project, okay? Uh, it's just writing some different functions, right? Um, so, but, but I, I probably shouldn't get into that unless, unless some people want to ask me some questions on it because I've kind of skipped some things. I mean, kind of before you get to that step, you ought to familiar, familiarize yourself with the basics of like the build system and, and the file system and stuff like that. So I had a video about that as well, kind of before you get into trying to use Visual Studio and, and, and working on the example assignment. Um, So those are um, um, by the way, I had had kind of some documentation in here that you can some reference documentation that you can use. So in particular, what I'm thinking about right now is is the stuff I called the, the class dev box reference. So um, you know, it, I mean, learning how to use stuff from the line command line is not a goal of this course, but it's certainly a, a useful skill to learn. Uh, but you really only need uh, a few basic commands for this class, I think. Um, you won't have to learn anything too complex, just how to get around so that you can run these make commands, right? So, so you ought to be able to do, um, like, for example, uh, pwd to, to figure out where you are in the file system. So normally, when you first open up a terminal, uh, it'll start you in what's known as your home directory, right? Same thing for if you're doing a, a Windows MS-DOS prompt. So, so when you open up a command terminal on Windows or, or a terminal on, on Unix, uh, you'll start off in some notion of your home directory. So on Unix Linux systems, it's usually in your slash home, right? Um, so, so in this case, um, the file system starts at what's known as the root. And you can, you can look at the root of your file system by doing an ls on slash. But then under the, the root of the file system, this is like the C colon drive if you're a Windows kind of person. So here it just slash is sort of the, the root of your file system. Um, and under there we've got some subdirectories like home. So I can, I can list the, the, the files and directories that are in my home directory. So again, if you have your Vagrant uh, dev box set up, you'll find that there's two users. There's the default Ubuntu user. Um, and then there's this vagrant user. Um, and you can continue on. So if I want to see the files in home vagrant, um, I can do that, All right? But it's, uh, you have to understand kind of what your current location is within the file system. So some commands like 
If I don't specify the particular directory I want to list using the ls command, it defaults to listing the files in my current directory. Okay, so since I'm currently in home vagrant, if I do an ls, it'll list the files in my home directory. All right. Um, so as I talk about in the video, you can um, all commands from a Unix command line um, accept flags to modify their behavior. So in this case, I often use dash L and dash H. So dash L gives you a long directory listing. So instead of having all the files, just the names of the files, each, each file or each directory is on its own line and you get extra information like the permissions, who owns the file, when the file was created, the size of it and stuff like that. Um, dash H just gives you human readable. So the, the only, it affects some other stuff, but the only thing you mostly see from this is that you'll get the, the file sizes in kilobytes or megabytes or uh, gigabytes if you have some really big files. So. Uh, instead of kind of just the number of bytes. So. But yeah, that's what this column is here. That's just the size of the file. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you need to be able to, to move around in the file system to do stuff from a command line. So, you know, um, um, I need to change my, in order to build stuff, to, to use the build system, you need to be able to change into um, your repository. So, um, uh, so yeah, from your home directory, you should have a directory called repos. Um, and then from here, you should, you'll probably only have one subdirectory called the, the COSC2336. And then from here, that, that is your shared uh, repository file. So those will be all the files that you saw when you did your git clone, right? Uh, but yeah, in particular, you can change into assignments. And then you can change into the particular assignment that you want to work on and build and stuff. So um, I'll just go to the example one assignment. Um, and then here you can do all these things then, right? So if you don't have the reference up, you can do a make help. Um, it should tell you most all these. Um, but you can, all the projects, you should be able to make them clean. So that just deletes everything. So you can restart your build uh, from scratch. Uh, and then normally if you do a make and you don't specify, th these are known as targets for, for make is, is a standard, it's an old um, technology, but, but it's, it's still pretty commonly used. Um, so it, it's for organizing uh, build systems for more complex programming uh, projects. So, so the default target, if you don't specify one, is to do a make all. So you can just do make or you can do the make all explicitly. That should build all of the executables um, that are defined. Um, so what you'll see here is, is, is it actually running the, the, the G++ compiler to build the files in, in your assignment or your project directory. So, um, so it'll build uh, some kind of temporary, some, it'll build some preliminary files first, so object files, and then you'll see other commands where it links those together. So here it linked together those two object files to end up with the test executable. Um, and then we did some more stuff to build another executable called the debug, uh, the, the debug executable. Um, um, And then when you're ready to test your project, you can run make test, right? So, I'm oh, sorry, that's not, uh, you can do make run. That'll actually run the unit tests. So, um, and I'm not gonna have time today to go into this, but yeah, you should watch the video about the example project about how you need to use the, uh, the unit tests uh, to work on the assignments. So, but this is kind of what you want to get. So, so you want to get it so that when you run the unit tests, all your tests are passing and everything is green. If, if you get that far where you've uncommented um, and you can get all your tests to pass, you're probably pretty good for the, uh, for the assignments for this class, basically. So. Um, and there's some others uh, that I might talk about later in the class. So. 
We can run the code formatter by doing a beautify. So this will make certain that your code conforms to class coding style guidelines. Uh, you can create um, documentation um, from, for, your, for these projects. So I will talk more about that later, but if you do that, uh, you'll find that, um, if I can find my file browser, you'll, you'll find that um, when you do a make docs, you'll find that there's now directories, HTML and LaTeX, which have the automated, automatically generated documentation uh, for the assignment or the project. So for the HTML, uh, you can go in there if you, if you want to and start with the um, index.html. Um, to see all of your source code documentation. Uh, anyway, but, but yeah, I, I, you know, um, you can look at that. We, we won't really be doing anything with the documentation, except um, I will be requiring you to uh, to correctly create headers for all the functions that you write for this class. So you should document your functions uh, with some basic information always. Um, the uh, a description of the function and uh, the input parameters to the function and the return value for the function at a minimum. So, but you'll see what I mean when you look through the videos. And I'll talk more about things like that. Um, um, yeah, and then finally, uh, kind of maybe an important thing, you know, besides being able to build. So, so if you ever kind of get into a bad state, you can always clean up everything and, and rebuild from scratch. Right. So that'll tell you. The first thing I'll, I'll ask you to do if you're having problems is to first clean your project and then do a make, uh, make all, and then and show me whether you're getting any compile errors or not. So, um, but you know, when you're ready to submit your assignments for the class, you should do a make submit. Um, and I think I've already mentioned this uh, in this our session here, but that'll create a file uh, called, you know, whatever, dot tar dot gzip which includes all the files that I need to grade your submission basically so don't try to create that by hand because different assignments um, I need different stuff to grade them so you really need to run the make submit target and submit whatever you get as a result um, uh, for the assignment there so. um, Okay, um, and yeah, at that point, I mean, you know, I've, I've covered some of the most basic stuff, um, and, and I do have another meeting at three here that I'm going to have to go to, so I think, I mean, I've, I've mostly just been talking here, which uh, probably won't be normal for these sessions, so, you know, if, if, if I don't get a lot of questions kind of on these sessions uh, in future, you know, I, I might, um, um, I mean, you know, I'll keep doing them, uh, but um, I, won't, I won't necessarily talk the whole time like this um, so, so they really will be for people to come with questions but, but I probably am going to stop at this point uh, and hang around uh, until three here um, but uh, yeah if uh, but but yeah um, if you have questions now go ahead and start um, asking them you can enter them in the chat or just unmute so so but otherwise let me know Um, yeah, it, uh, uh, Ian, so people that, that are having problems uh, installing on the dev box, it would be best to, if you can, copy and paste what you're seeing um, and, and send me an email. So I think I've been talking with, with Ian a little bit already. Um, um, so I, I think, Ian, that you might be one of the people that 
that can try the workaround uh, and, and see if that helps or not. So, but, but we'll see. But, but yeah, send me an email um, on, on what you're seeing exactly from your terminal or anybody else if, if you're getting some issues on your terminal. So. checking my examples here. So all, all the examples from the lecture video should be in here. And if you just do a make, it'll build everything. So I probably already mentioned this, um, but yeah, I encourage you, I mean, not just to watch the videos, but to actually bring these examples up in the editor and, and try changing them and, and, and building them, you know, so for, so for week one, um, uh, there were three example, source code files, uh, user-defined functions, user-defined data types, and arrays. So yeah, the third thing we're kind of reviewing are, are using arrays and stuff uh, in C++. So. So there's the second example of code from this week. I should probably change the, the build in here. So for, for the example thing, if you do a make clean, it's, um, it's going to rebuild everything. So uh, if you're, if you're, trying to run these from Visual Studio. So. Okay, um, I'm probably going to end uh, the video here so I can get ready for the next one, uh, unless anybody has some kind of last minute questions. So uh, people seem to be mostly just hanging out watching me do stuff here. Although hopefully you guys are working on your own, uh, either getting your dev box set up or starting to look at the uh, materials and stuff. So.
All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. So uh, we will have um, the next meeting at Wednesday then. So, um, um, so at that point, hopefully most everybody will have their dev box up and people can ask some questions about the assignments and things. So, all right. I will see you guys on Wednesday then.